Hey boys and girls, welcome back. We're going to review for exam four now. You guys have all gotten this reverse, uh, review sheet, I hope, during class and uh, you've went over it uh, in your small groups and so now it's time to go over it with me to see how you all did. So let's start by practicing naming and formula writing. It's a big part of the test, probably 60 to uh, maybe even 70% of the test is going to require you to be able to write or name a, uh, write a formula for a compound or name a compound to complete the question. So make sure you can do this. Uh, number one, aluminum sulfide. We have a metal and a non-metal. Um, so let's see, aluminum, you guys should know, is three positive. It has 13 electrons. Remember, kiddos, wants to get to 10. Uh, to become like a noble gas, so it loses three. So aluminum is always three plus. And sulfide comes from sulfur, and that has 16 electrons, wants to get to 18 to become like argon, so it gains two, it's negative two. So sulfide is negative two. So if this is positive three and this is negative two, we've got to find a number they have in common so that they cancel out their charges, which is six. So if I have two aluminums, that gets me to six positives. If I have three sulfurs, that gets me to six negatives. So that's perfect. Now notice there are no prefixes in this name. Remember, we only use prefixes when we name compounds, when we're dealing with a non-metal bonded to a non-metal. A lot of kids forget that. Okay. Number two, potassium oxide. So potassium has uh, 19 electrons. It's in group one wants to get to 18 like argon, so it loses one, positive one charge. Oxide comes from oxygen, has eight electrons, wants to get to 10 like neon, so it gains two negative charges, so it's O with a negative two charge. So we'd need two potassiums to get me to two positives, and my O to keep me at two negative. So remember the sum of the charge for these ionic compounds must equal zero. Okay, now we're gonna name a couple. Uh, number three, MgCl2. Do not call this magnesium dichloride. Don't do it. It's a metal in there. We only use prefixes, kiddos, if we have two non-metals stuck to each other. So we're just going to say magnesium. Okay, it does not need a Roman numeral. Remember, you only need Roman numerals if the element, if the metal is not in group one or two and it's not aluminum, zinc, cadmium, or silver. So magnesium does not need a Roman numeral in its name. Cl2 is chlorine, but remember all diatomic, uh, binary compounds, excuse me, end with ide. So that's magnesium chloride. Okay, number four, we do have two nonmetals stuck to each other. So we're gonna use our nonmetal rules. This is, has a G after it to make you aware that that's not an acid. This, uh, this is gaseous. Uh, HF stuck together. So H is hydrogen. We don't need to use the prefix mono. And F is fluorine, but it's binary, so we end it with ide. So that's just simply hydrogen fluoride. Now H2SC is binary. Starts with an H, has an AQ after it, so it's a binary acid. Do you remember what all binary acids begin with? That's right, hydro. So we're going to start with hydro here. And then binary acids all end with ic acid. So SE is selenium, but we're going to call it selenic acid. CCL4, two nonmetals, so we're going to use our prefixes. We don't need to use a prefix mono for one, we can just say carbon. But do you remember what the prefix for four is? That's right, tetra. So carbon tetra, that's chlorine, but remember all binary compounds end with ide, so it's tetrachloride, carbon tetrachloride. Number seven, AS2O3. Arsenic, yes, I know it's a metalloid, but it's on the right of that line, which means we can go ahead and use the um, covalent rules, which we can use prefixes on. So AS2 is a non uh, AS is a nonmetal and so is O. So the prefix for two is di, and AS is arsenic, of course you knew that. And the prefix for three is tri, and that's oxygen there, but we want to end it with ide. All binary compounds end with ide. So diarsenic trioxide. Okay, number eight, hydrobromic acid. Hey, you know that this acid only has two elements in it because it starts with hydro. 
and of course one element is going to be hydrogen and it's going to act like a metal with a positive one charge and bromic comes from bromine uh, bromine has 35 electrons wants to get to 36 like krypton so it's going to add one so Br negative so HBr we'll put an AQ after it binary acids only exist when they're dissolved in water and AQ means aqueous or dissolved in water Okay, chlorous acid. Now this guy has more than two elements in it. It's an acid that does not start with hydro. So how do we how do we write the formulas for those? Do you remember? Yeah, if it's an us acid, it comes from an ite ion. So we want to find the chlorite ion. Here it is, and you'll have access to this polyatomic chart for your test. So chlorite, where'd it go? There we go. Chlorite is ClO2 negative one. So if chloride is ClO2 negative 1, hydrogen will act as a metal with a positive 1 charge. That's positive 1, that's negative 1. My acid is HClO2. Okay? And the last of the naming and formula writing problems, NH42Cr207. NH4 is called ammonium. It's really the only positive polyatomic ion you have to worry about. Do not get it confused with ammonia. This is ammonium, and Cr207 actually has a prefix in its name. Cr207, 2 negative, is called dichromate. So we don't change that, we just call it ammonium dichromate. And we're done with that. Now, just a little heads up. You'll notice on these practice I neglected, sorry my bad, to put in compounds that might need Roman numerals in their name. Or names that have Roman numerals in them for you to write the formulas. So don't forget to study that part on your own. Okay, all right, number 11 is going to be a percent composition or a percent by weight problem. Now for these, you have to, know, you have, to have the formula of the compound. So on number 11, I give you the name. This doesn't help out a whole lot, so we've got to write the formula first. Sodium is Na, and remember kiddos, when it forms a bond, uh, it's in group one, positive one. Remember that's because, uh, let's see, in this case for sodium, it has 11 electrons, wants to get to 10 like neon, so it loses one, with a positive one charge, and bicarbonate. Now that's a polyatomic, so we're going to find bicarbonate on our chart. There it is, HCO3, negative one. So let's see, if that's positive one and that's negative one, I just need one of each. So the formula is NaHCO3. So that's part of my battle. The next thing I need to do in a percent composition problem is find the weight of that compound. So for this compound, I have a sodium in it. And to find the weight of a sodium atom, we'll use our periodic table. And sodium is 22.990. We'll go to the nearest hundredth, remember. So 22.99 for sodium. Hydrogen, uh, we're gonna go to 1.01. .01. Carbon, 12.01. And we have three oxygens, and they are, let's see, 15.999, that goes to 16.00 to the nearest hundred. So we'll add these guys up to get the formula weight of that compound. So make sure you guys bring your calculators with you. Uh, let's see what we have here. 22.99 plus 1.01, oh, sorry, punched that in wrong, plus 12.01, Plus, I'm going to use my parentheses key here, 3 times 16.00, I get 84.01 grams per mole. Now that's the weight of the compound. Now, not done. I need to find the percent by weight of each element. So let's start with sodium. So the percent by weight of sodium would be the weight of the sodium in the compound, 22.99, divided by the total weight. 84.01, and we'll change that to a percentage by multiplying uh, by 100. So we have 22.99 divided by 84.01 times 100, and we get it's like 27.37 percent sodium. Now we'll do the same thing for our hydrogen. And that's the weight of my hydrogen in the compound, 
divided by the total weight of the compound. We'll change that to a percentage as well. So we have 1.01 .01 divided by 84.01 times 100. And that gives me, oh, let's see. Oh, sorry, let me, let me clear that I did that. 1.01 .01 divided by 84.01 times 100. Let's see if I plug that in the right way this time. <laughs> I am messing that up. What am I doing wrong here? Clear. 1.01 .01 <laughs> divided by 84.01. .01. And then we'll multiply that answer by 100. And, okay, I'm having a mind cramp here, kiddos. 1.01 .01 divided by 84.01 .01 equals times 100. Okay, Mr. Hummer. Oh, <laughs> the answer is 1.20 percent. Sorry. Um, small, uh, small thinking problem there. Got the same answer three times, thinking I was wrong because it seemed too small. Sorry about that, folks. Okay. Now let's go on to the percentage of carbon, and that's going to be the weight of my carbon divided by the weight of the compound times 100. Whoops, let's see if I can do this one correctly. So 12.01 .01 divided by 84.01 times 100 is, there we go, 14.30% it looks like. And that's my carbon. Now the last element you can do pretty simply. Um, don't all the percentages have to add up to 100? So the percentage of my last element, which is oxygen, would be 100% minus the other percentages, 27.37, 1.20, and 14.30. And whatever's left over has to be the percentage of oxygen. So let's see what that turns out to be. Uh, 100, uh, and we'll take away the 27.37 from sodium, we'll take away the 1.20% from hydrogen, and we will take away the 14.30% from carbon, and I get 57.13% finally oxygen. Okay, so that's how you do weight percent. Sorry about the small little brain cramp I had there midway through the problem. Those are pretty straightforward. Okay, next up, let's find the weight percent in phosphoric acid. So let's find the weight of this compound. We've got three hydrogens. Remember, we just looked that up. That's 1.01 grams per mole apiece. We've got a phosphorus, which is 30.97 grams per mole. And we've got four oxygens, which we looked up just a moment ago for the previous problem. That's 16.00. So let's see what the weight of the compound is. We'll clear this out. We have 3 uh, times 1.01. .01. Of course, that's 3.03. .03. That's my hydrogens plus the 30.97 for my phosphorus. And then finally, we're going to add the weight of our four oxygens. So I'll use my parentheses here at the, here at the end. 4 times 16.00 gives me, I hope I did that right, 98.00 grams per mole. Now, let's find the percent hydrogen. So we're going to take the weight of all the hydrogen in our compound, 3 times 1.01 .01 divided by 98.00. See if I can do my hydrogen correctly this time. So we have um, 3 times 1.01. .01. Uh, we're going to divide that by 98.00 times 100. So we get 3.09% hydrogen. Okay, and our phosphorus will be the weight of phosphorus. Uh, phosphorus, sorry. So that's 30.97 divided by the total weight of my compound times 100. So 30.97 divided by 98.00 gives me Oh, let's multiply that by 100 to change it to a percentage. 31.60%. And let's do the oxygen a little differently. Let's do it the same way. Percent oxygen. That would be the weight of all my oxygens. 
4 times 16.00 divided by 98 times 100. So we have 4 times 16 divided by 98 times 100 gives me 65.31%. Now you can check your work quickly, and all these percentages should add up to 100%. Okay? It takes us through number 12. Let's see what number 13 is. Number 13 is our first empirical formula problem, and I think I'm going to stop there. We'll chop this up into two review videos. We'll do empirical formulas, molecular formulas, and then we're going to uh, balance equations to wrap this review up. So we'll say bye for now. And we'll come back in just a few minutes to wrap this up. See ya.